You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Cricket Podcast. I'm Ross Legg, and today is a very special day. I am joined by a World Cup winner um, who owned England's middle overs in his ODI shirt and is now set to transform into a San Francisco unicorn. Uh, welcome to the show, Liam Plunkett. Thanks for having me. Ah, absolute pleasure. I think the pleasure is all mine on a uh, kind of a, a Monday afternoon. Um, we're going to go straight into talking about Major League Cricket. And there's been a um, there's been a couple of attempts to break America with cricket. Um, COVID, investments, uh, ICC blessings. Um, but the six-team league feels like it's going to happen this time. Uh, Major League Cricket, bit of a good ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's just following suit from obviously baseball and soccer with the the way it sounds, the way it comes across. And yeah, I mean, I think there's been a few attempt uh, attempts, as you mentioned earlier. I don't know the full details of that. I mean, obviously it didn't work out. So it's put us in a better position. Mm-hmm. As you said, six teams, which is very exciting. Uh, it's only uh, four weeks away now, four and a half weeks away. Uh, we get to play in the, the new stadium. Also the uh, the stadium down in North Carolina. Uh, that, that Morrisville that, that yeah. also looks really good we played minor league cricket there last year the last few years and they've added some uh, seating some better facilities there so we should have two really good grounds to play on and that's what you want when international players come across you want good grounds good facilities and you want a good product uh, you want many runs scored uh, for my sins uh, being a bowler I'm, I'm actually happy with that if it grows the content and grows sport here I'm happy to go the distance only if we win. Only if we win. Though. Only if you win. Uh, super competitive still. Um, when it comes to those six teams, we've got what the you've got your guys, San Francisco Unicorns. We've got Texas Super Kings, um, Seattle Orcas. I never thought a team name would be an Orca, but we don't mind it. Uh, Washington Freedom, uh, which yep. is very on brand. Uh, and then my New York and LA Knight Riders. Yep. Um I think well, more and more players are kind of being announced. And I mean, it's fair to say it's, it's attracting, well... It's attracted the press, I can imagine it wanted, um, but it's also asking some pretty big questions of cricket at the moment. So uh, your former teammate, Jason Roy, um, caused all kinds of uproar over here because people didn't really do their homework on what he was actually signing up for. Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 it's almost like the start of the domino effect, right? I think there's huge names. Um, it's only going to go to, from strength to strength. Is that how you feel about it? I think so, mate. It, it's I guess what my position is is in terms of obviously cricket in the UK. I want that to be strong. I want it to be the one of the strongest in the world, and obviously America alongside that. Mm-hmm. I want people to have an opportunity to come across here and play sport in America, to play cricket here. Even down the line, the connections you make. America is such a big place; it just opens up opportunities for cricketers. People like Jason Roy, who obviously I know very well, and as you said, he still wants to play for England, but there's a gap in the market, and he can pop across and play. Why not? I mean, that's what it is. It's it's a bit like circus is the wrong word, but you're going to travel with teams, aren't you? You're going to sign for a franchise and you're going to travel around the, the world playing in these leagues. And the way that sport's going, especially if you look at sports like golf and even boxing now and head into different parts of the world and following the money. Cricket, you're not here for a long time. And I know from, from me later on in your career, you pick up these injuries. So you're trying to make... Uh, money while you can but mm-hmm. the opportunity to play cricket in america is obviously fascinating and an exciting time as a kid growing up in england the sports in america are so the big thing right the way they do it mm-hmm. so hopefully we can follow suit and we are a cricket but with an american twist well, well you, you mentioned kind of looking at from going kind to of be englishman and then looking at the states everything's massive right compared to us like you mentioned the facilities the stadium um i think if there's going to be one market that's kind of built for trying to do cricket properly, it feels as if kind of the, the American market will be the one going, look, we've got big sports covered lads. So I think we could do cricket. Yeah. I mean, also with the demographic here, you have a lot of people who don't, who like cricket. Uh, there's pockets around here where there's a lot of cricket being played. Mm-hmm. And if you starting to provide uh, high quality cricket with the best players in the world in a venue near where these pockets are, then you're going to fill out crowds and you're going to get traction and, our aim is, well, for what my, my sort of view on it is, you want to build this youth coming through. Major League is now going to have people looking at it and say, I can get to that point. I can play against the best players in the world. Potentially, I can go and play in a competition and score a quick 100, which opens the doors for me everywhere else. You want a, you want a kid to come through academy, say a kid who's at Philadelphia Academy, plays minor league, does well, goes to major league, scores a quick 50 or 100, then the world's open to him. He has a stream where he can play professional cricket, the eyes are on him, he can make good money. 
right now and obviously in America to a certain sort of degree is you, you, you've got the talent here, U11s, U13s, U15s, as good as anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. But it's that drop off now is, well, what do I do next? And then obviously you go, you probably go back into you and your education, you go to be a doctor or software or whatever you want to do. Whereas mm-hmm. now you have that stream of there's an academy, there's a minor league and a major league, and then USA cricket, and you get better and better and better. And then hopefully we'll see that improvement and the, the, the hunger to play. Well, let's dive into uh, playing minor league cricket then. So this has obviously been the, the precursor. Um, you play for the Philadelphians. Um, how have you found that? And how the, how the crowd's been? And how accepting are people to come to the grounds and start to actually enjoy the sport? Yeah, I'm fortunate. Obviously, obviously Philadelphia, which is home now, we have a minor league team. Uh, got good guys who look after that, who own that team. Uh, they're very passionate the way they do it. And they'd see themselves... Uh, as like mini IPL owners, right? They've got the the proud of the like the franchise, the minor league team that they want to grow. So we we did really well. We held a Philadelphia cricket festival. I think we got nearly two thousand people in to watch that on a weekend. Mm-hmm. So it's good. It's got a good traction. You just need to yeah keep building it, right? It needs to. The minor league teams need to get good grounds down the line. Yeah, uh, but maybe to take it a bit more serious. But the standards very good. Um, I I, I was turning up and. Maybe didn't do my homework on other teams, but you'd, you'd turn up and you'd have international players, ex-international players who have played against playing for England, West Indies guys, or guys who played test cricket, one day cricket for Bangladesh or Pakistan. Mm-hmm. The standard's pretty good. It's just right now is it's that facility. If you're playing on uh, what artificials or concrete wickets and the townships don't allow you to cut the grass so short, so the outfields are pretty long. And But it's the cricket's good. It's just we'll get there with the infrastructure Teams yeah. are taking that more serious now. And I think this year, everyone has to play on hybrids, which is another step forward in, in, in the right direction. So we've got to so say the facilities are going to be invested in. And I think that's, that's kind of a big cornerstone in actually making what Major League Cricket is, is going to be about. Um, how else do you see kind of the US evolving? So we've got the, the youth coming through. We've got the diaspora of kind of people who like cricket kind of based around the, the States. Um, how quickly do you think it can evolve? Because, I mean, look, look where, where the IPL started in 2008 to where, where it is now, it's a completely different beast. Where do we think kind of major league cricket's going to go over the next five to 10 years? Uh, I'm not sure. Hopefully we get this first one in the books and it's very successful. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be on some, I'm not sure if it's announced, but it's good. It's also on some good platforms for people to watch. I guess in terms of you're a successful businessman in America, like you might not know the history of cricket and people might not invest until they see what happens in that first year. Mm-hmm. So after the first year, you'll probably see that actually the viewership's quite high uh, and people might start investing, especially American companies who want to see it grow, which is sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I just hopefully we, we see it uh, keep evolving. More stadiums get built throughout the country. You get more major league teams involved. Hopefully the major league teams want to invest in the youth so we can have the, the academies in minor league and major league potentially in under one sort of umbrella, a bit like county cricket. That's what, if you can have that, that's what's going to be win-win, right? You have that stream, as I spoke about earlier, leading you all the way to play for USA cricket. Mm-hmm. We want all these all these franchises to buy in for that uh, grassroots, grassroots cricket or that kind of approach to see youngsters coming through, learning from mm-hmm. the international players. Uh, and th- that's how England guys have got better as well. It was a huge uh, plus for when the guys were allowed to start playing in the IPL a lot more, the English guys. And you can see where that white ball team went and where yeah. they are, how, how good they are because they play against players in the IPL and know how to play spin and uh, a lot better than they used to. But yeah, hopefully we can get that infrastructure built and potentially can we get it in schools? Can we get it in kindergarten early? Can we even show them what a cricket bat and a ball looks like? And maybe have that in the curriculum down the line. That, that'd be amazing to have that. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh, you mentioned there around the um, piece of getting to the USA team. Uh, there's kind of been mixed reports around whether you're going to consider playing for the US, whether you're not going to play for the US. Is it, unless, yeah, it's unless, it's mar- unless it's a Masters team, then probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for me, that was never... Uh, I was obviously came across to, to play in Major League Cricket and with... COVID, things got slowed down a little bit. So obviously last year didn't happen. Mm. Uh, I also want to play maybe this year, next year. Uh, but obviously in my back burner is I'm still developing and fin- just finished uh, like uni now. So the back end of that, doing uh, courses in strategic leadership and just doing that kind of stuff. Do I want to be involved in uh, the management side and help grow it? And that's probably my, my aim. 
yeah. is, is to play as long as I can play. And if I'm turning up and performing and not holding anyone back, if I'm just there because I'm known as a cricketer, but I'm stopping youth coming through, then I'm not doing my job. Yeah. So and also in two years, if I didn't or wouldn't qualify for USA, if I'm still there playing, then we're not doing our job making people better, I guess. So it's, I don't yeah. do that. But so, yeah, so- I, I had desired to play for USA cricket just because that I'd finished with England and I, I mean, if I was younger and it was different circumstances, but you finish with England, one of the best teams in the world at that, well, the best team in the world at that point, and you come across here, and I guess you set different goals and yeah. what your career looks like. So, so when you when you say about going into management, is that the more administrative side, are we, or are we going to see you more in like a general manager kind of Liam Plunkett turned Billy Bean type style? <laughs> Brad Pitt, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, general, general, general manager is the term, isn't it? But that that'd be very appealing to me, and that's what I'm trying to do. Is a good thing about stepping away from people you know and county cricket and stuff. You can have that divide now. You're not just that player towards, uh, like the experienced player. You go away and learn about yourself, and you put the work in to to study, to learn, uh, to test how you do things, how 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 what your leadership skills like, and you do that through many ways in terms of your coaching uh, academies here. Uh, I'm doing like a national development coach's role alongside mm-hmm. Rusty Tehran. He's on the, the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast looking after major league players. Yeah. So it's you, you, you generally do make little mistakes, but you learn about yourself. And I'm not saying that job's here tomorrow. It could be in five, six, seven years, or it could be around the corner, but you prepare you. But I, I guess, as you said, that role of a general manager is very appealing. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of a dream job for most kind of but yeah. people who like sport, let alone people who have played sport and then go into something like that. Um, data analytics, are you, uh, would you be kind of a money ball type guy or are you more kind of arm around the shoulder, gut feel? I think a bit of both and hopefully you'd have people who are uh, more tuned up on that. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I went to uh, the the, Wash, the Nationals. I, uh, I met a guy who was the head uh, physio there. We went in and met the uh, pitching coach and went through all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it, it was just after I'd watched Moneyball, so it was very fascinating how they went about that. But it's there now, and it's obviously working. So I would definitely get into that side of it, and it's something you have to learn, right? If that's if you're looking to be like a role, like a general manager, you have to learn about all these different things, and maybe you have to educate yourself more, or put yourself through some more courses, or study a little bit more on that stuff. Yeah, I, I like how I've gone completely cliche when it comes to American sports of bringing up Moneyball immediately. Yeah, uh, I, in like I, I'm with you, mate. It's still one of the best books, isn't it, in terms of sports management? It says that's one of the best books to read about because it's, it's such a great story, wasn't it? It was a great film to watch. Uh, I'm going to shift gears a little bit here um, because there's a pressing matter here. So uh, you'll be lining up alongside Aussie Supremos Aaron Finch and Marcus Stoinis. Yeah. Um that's a hell of a lot of biceps and broad shoulders for the fans to be enjoying, isn't it? For you three in a, in a side like that. Uh, sure. He's clusters in that group. Dorian <laughs> is definitely in. He rocks around and struts around. But I'm fortunate. I know these guys well. I've played with both of them. Finchie, I played with him at Yorkshire. Dorian mm-hmm. I played with him at uh, uh, the Stars, Melbourne Stars. So it's that's the way franchise cricket is. You're generally playing in groups and you know the guys pretty well. So I'm I'm, I'm pumped for these guys to come across. We just had a camp with the, the unicorns uh, last week in, in San Fran uh, with the local guys who, who live in, in America. Uh, and hopefully we're going to meet up uh, probably the third, fourth of next uh, what June, July, a week yeah. before the camp and the international boys are going to be there. And I'm, I'm hoping they're going to be excited for this opportunity. It's it's all new for them. Absolutely. And, and there's going to be a bit of overlap uh, with the ashes. Um, so, I mean, that dressing room should be pretty fun to be a part of. Um, and then from a USA point of view, um, yeah. the domestic talent you've got with the with the unicorns, is there some people who we definitely should be looking out for? Because I'm guessing the people listening to the podcast won't know too many USA uh, cricketers. So it'd be great if you've uh, got one or two to look out for. You have. I mean, a lot of the guys who who play have played first class cricket around the world. You've got guys... Uh, you got uh, a few guys who play like in South Africa, 50 first class games and <clears throat> they are known. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously with the internationals playing in these franchises, you have six international players in each team. So if you look at ours, six and if me and Corey play, you've got eight international players. And then the next, you got fighting for the next guys coming through. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have uh, Kami Leroux, who's played in South Africa, played in Joburg, uh, left hand fast bowler, kind of like in the Stark mold. Tall can be quick. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, if he clicks, it's an opportunity for him. If, if people like him and Smith Patel played for India under 19s, World Cup winner, 
an under 19s World Cup winner. If these guys are to showcase, if they're not excited to play this and obviously come in and perform, then you, you shouldn't be playing cricket. But it's a lot of these guys have come across here and it's a chance to uh, sort of reignite that flame and sort of the career path can change very quickly again, can't it? We we see if someone turns up and, as I said, <clears throat> gets three wickets early doors and knocks out three international batters, and all of a sudden you're on uh, social media left, right and centre and you, you uh, grow as a, as a brand, don't you? Yeah, I mean, we see it when we've got kind of associate nations or kind of, well, lesser nations in, in inverted commas around them. Um, uh, like people like Sikander Raza had a great World Cup, great year leading up to it, ended up with an IPL deal, right? Yeah. Um, you've had some of the English boys play really well in the Blast or in the 100 and then get picked up in the Pakistan Super League and whatever else. So, um, as you say, it's, 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 a, it's a gateway, isn't it, for kind of what, the, what comes next? Yeah, um, as you said, the biggest one is probably Rashid Khan, right? So the way he's... How big of a player he is? He's the biggest one, big crickets, excuse me, in the world. Uh, obviously, performs day in day out, and you never know. You get a chance, and you're in a, a good support system. And a lot of these guys have been craving good coaching, uh, a professional environment. Mm -hmm. uh, coming across here, they they knew probably the first two years it was going to be tough to navigate with what they're coming into the facilities. But now that this is in place, the unicorns with the guys from Victoria coming across, it's. Uh, obviously good people to associate yourself with and the guys that I mentioned a bit earlier, the, the Smith Patel and, and Kami and these guys can learn very quickly. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, so Major League Cricket, I mean, I'm excited for it. I think we've got a couple of more kind of interviews with some of your teammates kind of lined up as well. Um, yeah, starts in a month's time. There's great people to be watching. Um, England, uh, though, Liam, that's kind of the, the book chapter that kind of has just ended really uh, just before COVID. Um, kind of we had to ask we asked some of our patreons and uh, people what question they want to ask and they wanted to know just how bloody amazing it was being in that dressing room when you won that final um and then second part to that you, you took three wickets in that final it kind of goes unsung really um so uh, that as a day for you could you, could you explain it and what, what was going on behind the scenes uh the final sorry uh, yeah yeah i mean i feel like the three, four years leading up to that, I know it was a different competition, but the T20, when we got beat in the final, we were starting to build momentum there and the team was coming together. Mm. People were in and out a little bit and there was one or two changes from T20 to, to ODI team, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a fly in my throat or something. <laughs> uh, right. I think that whole thing was the best stage of my uh, career in terms of how Morgs led the team. Uh, obviously, he spoke to Brendan McCullum and seen what he was doing, how passionate he was and the way he was positive and a bit like the test cricket, how that's going now. And Moggs, obviously, you spoke to him, had a good relationship with him. Also, his thoughts and his theories and the way he wanted to go and lead the team with that vision. And it was, it was obviously, it was amazing. Uh, it was a bit like you were playing in a club team, but it was international players who were doing all the right stuff. And behind the scenes, the, the training was hard. The, the guys went hard and tested each other and... There was no one slacking, really. I mean, mm -hmm. if you slack a little bit, you probably get pulled and say, come on, mate, you need to sort this stuff out. And that's a sign of a good team. Uh, even like when you arrange uh, team meals in the past, it, it, some people don't want to head down there, but we didn't even have to like schedule stuff. Someone had said, you want to go out for a bite to eat? And the next thing you have 16, 17 guys turn up for a bite to eat because it was that sort of closer bond. Yeah. In terms of that day, it was just obviously... Uh, we felt like we were the best in the world, but it's knockout cricket. World Cup is knockout cricket. Uh, we had a few, obviously, bumps in the road. We got beat a couple of times, uh, two or three times in that World Cup, and then we got to that final. Obviously, it's rain delay, but I, I don't know. I had something in the back of my mind. It wasn't. I'm not superstitious, but I felt like it was not not in terms of arrogant. I just felt like something the stars that had aligned, and I felt yeah. like we were our day. Uh, but yeah, behind the scenes, it's same as normal. The guys prep. Uh, the ball is normally turned up a little bit earlier. Uh, see the see the physios get taped up, <laughs> do their priming, whatever the guys sometimes go to the gym before the game. Uh, and then then you're into it. It's just soaking up the atmosphere. And sometimes it's hard because you want to win the game. You want to win the game. Instead of enjoying every single moment of that time, you're thinking about lifting the trophy. You're not, mm. not when you sit down and watching and stuff, but you, you want to obviously take all that in. And it's only sort of going back and watching that probably six months afterwards that you're, oh, you remember this. I remember this a little bit. Yeah. But it was the same as normal. The guys turned up and what's your process? When I'm bowling, you sort of, after the initial stages of being nervous, you sort of just get into your work. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and all of a sudden you'll go back and feel that wherever you feel, and you're like, oh, it's a World Cup final. Then you go back to work <laughs> by bowling. And 
Great, yeah, great day. And as I said, it's I watched it once, but it but it's nice. It's coming on what is it four years now or something like yeah. that? Yeah, bit like four. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how how quick that's gone. Yeah, you, did, you didn't fancy the super over. <laughs> I probably didn't get. I know. I remember Morgs coming in. I'm like, well, I don't ball at the death really anyway. So especially when you have Joffre and you have Walks, you can ball it nicely. Woody can ball it nicely. As you mentioned earlier, I'd, I'd ball in uh, middle overs a lot. I'm happy to ball death or up top, but there's people who can do it a lot better than me. If you get that <laughs> chance, if you, if you get that chance, is uh, you you would do it, but know your strengths, right? And I, I know my strengths. I know what they were, and it was balling in the middle. So yeah, we we had uh, we've got a theory on the uh, podcast that uh, the Kiwis should have actually picked Colin de Grandholm to actually bowl that super over. England couldn't hit him off the square. It was I think it was ten overs for twenty five runs, and you just like. What was happening there but it was obviously that rebuild period is just not as simple into that space it, it was nip- honestly it was nippling around he he runs in and he hits it obviously he nibbles it around and he's consistent and he he's a good bowler in them conditions yeah, it's yeah. Serious, even in the middle overs for me it was you didn't have to do too much different you run up and try and hit your line of length and the pitch was doing a little bit so it was actually a perfect wicket for, for him it, it was a good wicket for me uh so yeah it wasn't you just try to run up and ball consistent and it was doing enough even with that little slope at Lords as well. So you had that uh, already built in uh, nip away or nip back in. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a, a perfect way to finish your England career. Um, was Did you want to do it more or did you kind of think, do you know what, this is the time where this is this is the perfect way to go out? And it sort of, I didn't have time to think and it was sort of took away. It, was, it just went like that. And mm. as I said, the guys were on tour and stuff, but, I think I found out on social media and then it was, it was, it was, didn't get picked. And I was like, all right, well, I don't then want to go back in to be a 12th man or 13th man if people yeah. are injured. Like we did winning that World Cup, then be touring and not was the issue. But it's, it's a long time ago now. Uh, but yeah, it's, you're, I'm always watching or looking at the highlights and I want obviously the guys to win trophies. The T20 yeah. guys won a World Cup recently. So I'm obviously excited for them guys and hopefully you have guys in that team who can win three three or four World Cups. That'd be a, obviously an amazing achievement. Well, they've not replaced you yet in those middle overs, so uh, you never know. There could be a could be a call at the end of the year. Call back in. <laughs> no, it's like you said, it's, it's just the way sometimes it's the team's, uh, the way it's put together might be different, right? You might have more spinners than that or yeah, it's up top might get wicked so you don't need guys coming in the middle and doing that role. But there's plenty of guys who can do it. You just hopefully... Uh, they get in there, get some consistency and uh, perform. You obviously have Potts, who's a, is a nice bowler, and and Cars at Durham, who are very similar, can run and hit the pitch hard and uh, are consistent in that middle period. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm sure some of these guys are coming and are going to do well. Love it. Um, well, we're out of time. So, uh, Liam, thank you ever so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, Major League Cricket, it's going to be a success by the sounds of it. Um, oh, hope so, um, mate. Otherwise, I'll be back over there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we'll be uh, we'll be cheering on the uh, San Francisco Unicorn. So best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for your time. No worries. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast.